Hornby's 30th edition catalogue from 1984 folds upwards. So it starts off with introducing the little intercom system. Great toy value. Celebrates that they've been doing this for over 60 years. Gives you some information on servicing and tells you that every Hornby locomotive is triple tested before dispatch from the factory. But it is possible that a malfunction may occur during their long life. So as an idea of the range, you've got Fairly standard, old style diesel electric, an advanced passenger train, and a, a, a Lizzie, what's that? The Princess Royal, that particular one, an old LMS 462. So, having a look through, you've got the traditional steam locomotives. So, these ones at the top are four British Rail steam locos. Then you've got another four down here as well. What's quite nice about this catalogue is that you could potentially cut everything up, stick it up on the wall as a large kind of poster. It's designed poster wise, although obviously they don't don't stay stuck together. You know, they're not, not bound like that. Then you go on to the GWR. Sorry, the Southern. Then you go on to the Southern Railways and Great Western Railways and the next page has a selection from Southern Railways, from Great Western Railways and London North East Railways. Of particular note, the King Henry VIII class GWR R349 which I've just ordered which is due any day soon and a Battle of Britain class this one's Spitfire which uh, I've actually seen one of those running next page down you've got Southern Railways London North East Railways with their beautiful blue mallard there I mean that that is a gorgeous looking model it really is and uh, a GWR 440 County of Oxford class Okay, county class, should I say? Next page, you've got your Princess Royal, the class 7P. I have one of those, and you have the LMS 264 Fowler tank, which is in black. I have it in crimson. Up the top here, you've got a black um, 460 locomotive for class 5, then you've got the blue Coronation class 8P, and the class 4p compound oh, I've got one of those too next page steam locomotives so it tells you all about the smoke generator and how that works with putting the oil in the super detailed loco pack I've got one of those kicking around I've never put it on because I just snap it off that shows you what they look like with those fitted so then it shows you some small ones. Not all steam locomotives were owned by the large railway companies. Many were privately owned by industrial concerns who operate their own trains which carried supplies and materials from a main railway depot to the company's factory or works. Now, you could buy these, but they wouldn't really be very uh, realistic. I mean, that's the 040 tank, the Holden tank. There was one prototype made. So first of all, it's no. Secondly, Ford, really? That's a little LMS one, as is that one. Um, the 040 tank. Mm, no, I don't think so. This, this looks even more tacky. This looks like a toy. So anyway, we go on to the diesel and electric locos with a British Rail Coco, a British Rail Bobo, and a British Rail diesel electric shunt. I quite like that, that rectangular thing. And of course the advanced passenger train. I wouldn't mind one of those actually if I get one at a decent price. It was the showpiece of the 1981 catalogue after all. So then you've got a diesel multiple unit pack. The APT train pack is repeated there and there, you see, which is quite different. And another Bobo electric. This has got the overhead electric pickup so you can fit the catenaries. We've got some more diesel electric locos there and there. You're in a city 125 and you're type 37. 
and one rolling stock. Now, this is actually quite nicely photographed and displayed like this. You know, this is a nice double page spread. This this beats a lot of the previous catalogues, which just had literally this kind of thing, which didn't really bring any value to them. Now you can see them a bit nicer, a bit better. So there's a little selection there. You've got BR and Pullman and Southern Rail. Over here on the passenger coaches, you've got the Midland Railway Clerestory Composites, the LMS Corridor First Class and Third Class brakes, the LMS Four Wheel Coach, and then uh, some more LMS ones. And we've got the LMS Royal Mail Coach Set, which of course you've seen in operation on my on my track. We also have the passenger coaches from more modern times on the next page and then we're back to the older style with Great Western and LNER coaches. More BT ones and this one. So what is it? A BR DMU trailer second class one six. I don't know what that even means. But it's a bit different, it's green. Then, the modern royal train was formed in 1977 as part of the commemorative celebrations for the Queen's Silver Jubilee. and incorporates a total of 14 coaches, each with a distinctive, distinctive livery of royal claret with a vermilion red and black lining. The train is from time to time divided into two depending on the personages being carried. God save our gracious queen. There's the Queen's personal saloon and the Duke of Edinburgh's personal saloon. I've actually been on the, uh, the Royal plane, on the Royal flight down at Northolt, oh, good 15 years ago. Very nice ones. I saw where the Queen sat. She's the only one who's allowed to sit there. So here we go. There's a bit on planning your layout. It's a nice looking layout. Obviously, that's uh, a double level, as you can see by, for example, this bit here going over others. And you've got your, your stencils. And then this actually is quite nice to suddenly <coughs> train sets. Although, graphically, I would have thought you'd be best to put that at the top there, you see, just front of the train set. Right, here, this is interesting. Free membership and travel vouchers worth £5. With each Hornby train set, there is a free Rail Riders Club application form. On receipt of the form, Rail Riders will send you a membership pack together with £5 worth of free travel vouchers. Rail Riders, the happiest club in the land, starts here. Now, I've, I've got this very vague feeling at the back of my mind that that's familiar. I might have been a member of the Rail Riders Club. I can't verify it, but I may have been. So, looking at the sets. Clockwork train set, the toy one for the little boys and girls. Then the pick-up goods set for the slightly older boys and girls. Then the royal train. It's lovely. I wonder why they didn't paint the locomotive. Lovely looking box. Though. Look at that. Splendid, splendid. So the industrial freight set and the super sound freight set. So industrial freight set actually looks really toy-like there. Don't think I want one of those. So the super sound freight set, what's this do? With the sound generator included in this set, the excitement of railways really comes alive. As a super S locomotive moves off, a chuff chuff sound is heard. Its speed increases with the speed of the loco. The sound generator also includes a realistic whistle and a two-tone diesel horn. I don't want to say it, but I actually quite fancy the uh, the sound generator. Chuff, 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 chuff. Right, high speed train set. There you go. There's your Intercity 125. The Orient Express. How nice is that? Looky, looky. All those Pullman coaches. My friend Ray, he went on the Orient Express for his birthday. I think it was 60th, 65th, something like that. I had... Uh, Smoked salmon and scrambled egg muffins or crumpets, I can't remember which. He said it was rather lovely. He didn't go all the way. I mean he only went went for a for a sort of day trip. But uh I haven't been on myself. However, the Orient Express has terminated in one or two places depending on where you read and i.e. which hotel you read it in. So Istanbul, of course. So I've been there and I I've I've been to the station there, the Orient Express terminus. 
very nice it is too. I saw some of those curly whirly dervish dancing people there. Um, I've also been and had a coffee at the Hotel Le Baron in Aleppo in Syria, which apparently was also the end of the, uh, the Orient Express, but like I say, it depends who you speak to and where and when. Anyway, Freight Master set. Then Hornby track and gift packs. Now this is actually really nicely laid out. So it's nice and bright. Going back to last year's catalogue, the 1983 one, there's a lot of dark background stuff. This is nice and bright. You can see it clearly. It's laid out clearly. It shows you your boxes. Shows your extension packs. Shows your um, extension packs done as that instead of as it's not the same one as that say so instead of the track plan good yards extension gift pack good idea incorporate the buildings with some track rural station gift pack station sidings gift pack now now that is good marketing that's a really good idea so you flog yourself some buildings and you flog yourself some track job good so now we're talking about citing your layout. So fill in some pages with stuff that's actually some really good interest. I really like that idea for fixing against the wall, but quite frankly, there's absolutely no way I could manage to do that, I don't think. Logistically, I'm not I'm not good enough to do that, but I don't know, maybe maybe I could ask my dad. I don't know. If I if I do that with the um build I'm making at the moment, the layout I'm making at the moment that uses the um, buildings, I could do that because they're removable, but otherwise I'd need about a foot coming out from the side to do it in my um, on my landscaped one. Anyway, so wall mounted layout, so that's actually quite good, so you could do that and then you could have, let me show you, you could have these bits fold up there as well, so this folds up there, that folds there, you can see you've got your bolts going across and you can have something coming down to lock it. I could do that and then I could just, I don't know, paint it the same colour as the wall. But that works well because there you got the feet. The other way is to just have some, some feet or some trestles or some legs or something that you could drop down underneath or put some furniture down or something like that. But I quite, I quite like that idea. I might, I might even do that. So let's go on to the freight wagons and the rolling stock without banging on too much about things that may or may not ever happen. So Campbell's Soups Limited. They don't need one that size. They could do with it that size and just add water so that it's it's full strength. You know, as soon as it's concentrated and I'm famous for that. So the five plank wagon, the crane, the big hundred ton tank wagon. Well, that'd go bang on it. Milk tank wagon. KP peanuts. Now this 1984, so that's about the right era for the advert where you had little old Oliver Twist come up. Please, sir, I want some. <laughs> My mum hates that, but she used to cringe and she'd shout at us if we did that. That's for you, mum. Right, Golden Shred Van, Fison's Twin Silo Van, SO Tank Wagon, Black and Rioch Roach, I don't know. Polo Tank Wagon, I think that's a pretty nifty looking thing. Don't think it's real. I mean, seriously, why would you? You know, that's a, that's a liquid carrier, you know. Anyway, the cattle van's quite nice. Quite like the look of that. It's a nice little model. The brake vans. Does anybody want one of these? I've, I've tried to sell it twice, 20 years apart on eBay, and it still won't go. There we go. We've got Amos Benbow. Benbow. I've got a friend called Amos. I could get him that. Here's a plank. <laughs> Finer tank wagon, wimpy. Look at that. God, we've still actually got one of those in Lowestoft, unless it's closed down during during the last year. But yeah, Lowestoft, nineteen diameter, two thousand twenty-one. We've still got a wimpy, marvelous, amazing. It's awful. I don't know. We've still got it, but there you go. I can remember it from about the time this came out. Never a fan. I'm in South Africa as well. I think. Quite nice there. Okay, so some more freight wagons like the Duracell one. Again, not really re accurate, I would have thought. Red arrows. That's cool. Um, Yoxo, the dreadful toy helicopter car, but good playability. Now, I had one of these, these hopper wagons. 
I don't know why I didn't suit anything else. And that crane looks pretty cool, actually. I think pretty damn cool indeed. Then you've got your freight liner with the containers. You've got GWR and LMS goods fans. I've got those. I mean, I've got both of them. Now, Hornby Railways, traditional power. That's what we got here. This is actually good because it's giving you a good bit of information on the different ones. Okay. So the 912 there, that is the first one I had. I'm currently using the 911 because that's what came with the 1980 version of the R535 GWR freight set. I've also got some H&M flyers, which are my real ones. But yeah, so it tells you about the 912 quarter amp controller. So it's a low voltage output. We know that. It's got no, no guts at all. So it's ideal for a first train set. Yeah, the sound generator. That's all that's all kind of cool. And then you start looking at, at more fancy stuff. Look at those 900s and 902s, that's cool. And then you go to computerized control, you're 01. Now 1984. That one Sinclair C5 came out. And you had your Amstrads and your Vic 20s and your Commodore 64s maybe and your ZX Spectrums and ZX 80s and 81s. We had a ZX Spectrum 16K, unbelievable. A Word document is more than 16K now. But yeah, so that's your, your mid 80s. Um, There's a nice little track layout. So that's your mid 80s um, computerization. Look at this, phase one locomotive control. Computerized control, you've got a silicon chip. It's just, it looks like the era. So track and accessories, here you go. You've got this as a big double page spread. So that's pretty cool. It's a track, you've got, you've got um, telephone poles and your loading gauges, your water cranes. These are die cast metal still now. I don't know why. They're really good. That's the ones I've got on my layouts. Um, farm animals, city people, operating turntable, trees. Look at this, you've got conveyors, you've got your pylons and things. Look at that. So lots of playability there. Stations and accessories. Now look at this. The R588 station public address system. When an announcement is to be made, the operator presses a button on the microphone and speaks. The announcer's voice will then be heard through the speaker. I mean, that's cool. That's really cool. You know, that would have been great fun as a kid. It was driven my mum's spare, I'm sure, as did my little um, attached to the bicycle, fire, ambulance and police um, siren that had a microphone attached as well. That's pretty cool. Right, so we've got stations and platforms and things like this. And this is when they're doing that horrible, horrible brick finish. It's absolutely hideous. Oh, there's that station public address system. That was new for that, yeah. Buildings and kits. Now this is quite this is quite impressive actually. The diesel, the glazed diesel depot. Um, I wouldn't want one, the diesel maintenance depot, R516, but uh, I do think it's pretty cool. You've also got the R188 GWR station kit, Dunsett Station. They're really expensive. I just got outbid on way too much money for an unused kit of that, which I thought I might make for my own layout, but I won't. You've also got the GWR signal box and crossing kit. So that's pretty good. This is despite having a signal box. So I don't know quite why these were in here. Maybe they rolled Airfix or Daypole kits or something like that. So onto the signals and you can see them in situ there. So you've got the R171 and 172 single home and single distance signals. Um, you've got the R169 junction home signal and the R170 junction distance signal and the R406 color light signal. That's a color light signal. So I don't know what makes these new because they look like all of them. So anyway, but you could attach electronic remote control to them if you wanted. Bridges, tunnels and piers. Now that looks quite good like that. That's a nice bit of context, nice bit of 
um, visual impact on that as opposed to just showing it as a side on view. Still got that god awful archaic tunnel. But the bridges and the viaducts and the pilings and so on. My little pairs. And then the back page is the wrong way around. Turn it around and we've got the Art of Hornby. R988. The Art of Hornby traces the progress of this well known brand of British model railways for its 60 years by reproducing some of the prodigious output of literature. All the catalogue covers since 1925, Hornby Book of Trades. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to order that or try and find one on eBay. Anyway, on the back, we've got three more engines. So we've got the RO59GWR060 PT locomotive class 2721, which is a 2744 um, body. I've got one of those. And a GNR 060 ST locomotive class J13 and a Bobo Electric Phoenix class 862. 862 sorry so there we go that is your 1984 catalogue quite like that one